Welcome to A Corporate Time with Tom and Dan. I'm Tom. I am Dan. Um, I know we got our 10-year ACT anniversary show coming up. At yeah. Ten- let me do it. Let me do it. Let okay. me do it. It's at the Wayne Dench Performing Arts Center. It's the Ritz Theater at the Wayne Dench Performing Arts Center. Yeah. God, I messed it up. <laughs> I'm, I was. I thought I was going to be able to do it because normally you mess it up, but you yeah, got yeah, my yeah. head, and I messed it up. It's on TomAndDan.com. Yeah, you yeah. can get tickets. It's ten dollars, and the after party's at Tuffy's. So uh, that's going to be May thirty first. Indeed. So uh, we got a special guest. Is that... our guest traveling? Are we talking to yeah, him yeah, as yeah. he's traveling <laughs> too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's gonna. Uh, our next guest. Uh, you can you can see them March twenty eighth in Tampa. I believe that's uh, where they're going right now. March 29th, Jacksonville, and March thirtieth at one of our main watering holes and favorite bars, the Weston Trading Company in Sanford, Florida. It is Nick from the Found Footage Fest. What's up, Nick? Hey, Tom and Dan. Uh, how you doing? Good. Good. Good, good, good. So, Nick, I got to ask you, because Daniel has been explaining to me. He's been following you guys. Uh, well, I, let me explain what okay. happened. I, now, uh, can, Nick, you'd probably do it best, and, and a lot of times we're bad interviewers, and we start explaining what you do. Mm. I'm going to take a page. <laughs> I'm going to take a page out of my own book and just say, can you explain simply to our audience what the Found Footage Fest is? God, I you know it's been twenty years. I don't think I'm any better at that. But it's here's my here's my best attempt. It's a it's a guided tour through the weird VHS collection of me and my childhood friend Joe. And so we uh, these are all VHS tapes found at thrift stores that weren't meant to be shown in public. So not not movies, but things like exercise videos and training videos you might have had to watch in a break room. And uh, we project them on a huge screen in a dark room uh, for drunk people. Yeah, and, <laughs> and, and, and he's giving me shivers because there was a time. I'm 47. I don't know your age, Nick, but but yeah, I, 48. Okay, so, so we're right. The same age. Yes. Yeah, so okay. I remember in my bedroom there was a VCR tape that had been that was a copy that I'd passed around, and it was of the infamous farting preacher. <laughs> oh. Yes, hey, this I is, love that. This is when Farting Preacher was just making the rounds, and this is when you had to get Farting Preacher on a VHS copy. Okay, and yeah. it was like making its round. Yeah. But then, like the idea of, and that's not exactly what he's talking about, but the idea of finding like my mom's Jane Fonda workout cassettes. But like you're finding more rare, really, really interesting, like almost independent VCR like kind of creations. Are you not? Yeah, these are like strange one-off special interest tapes. So. You know, Jane Fonda, for us, is mainstream. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. we found one called uh, the Nude Treadmill Workout. Um, and it. it's exactly what it sounds like. Uh, people on treadmills nude working out. I don't know who that was for, um, but some perv bought that. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Hold on. How did you um, find that? Like, Did someone send it to you? No. that's that. You know, these are just at Goodwills, charity shops, um, people's garage sales. Uh, lately, we've been going to estate sales, you know, where somebody's has died and they're getting rid of, you know, they're liquidating all their assets. So you're going into somebody's home, you find their VHS collection, and, you know, you never know if the nude treadmill workout's going to turn up. <laughs> so, uh, okay, I'm curious about that. So you go to a estate sale and someone died and then has a whole wall of VHS tapes, right? How do you, because, or do you buy them all, then slowly go through them, or do you scan them and, and then pick out the ones yeah. that you know? This is a lot like of a, work. Yeah, you know, like, oh, this, is, this has is. got good potential. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> thank you for saying it's a lot of work, because um, my parents still don't know what I do. But, <laughs> um, the, uh, yeah, we, um, we used to buy more. Now we're more selective, because we started collecting tapes in 1991. Um, I found a training video in the break room of the McDonald's I was working at in, in high school, and it was so ridiculously dumb that I took it back and showed it to my buddy Joe. I stole it, basically, and it became the sort of running commentary of, of uh, jokes, and we'd have friends over in our small hometown in, in Wisconsin, and that's essentially what we're doing now, but we have more material. And um, so at the time, anything that looked funny, we would buy. Now, just since we've been doing collecting for, you know, uh, 30 some years and doing our live show for 20 it's uh we've had to you know you see the same tapes sometimes when you're at the state sale or at the thrift store so you know like eh, that one wasn't that good or gotcha. um but ultimately you don't know until you put it in the vcr and you know spend the man hours watching a cash register instructional tape for example <laughs> you know 
you don't know if there's going to be something funny on it until yeah. you watch it. Like one of the ones that you and I went through, Tom, not even like a few months ago, was that, in, in it, again, this is mainstream, this is not necessarily what he's talking about, was that Waffle House instructional video. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah Where yeah. we learned, you know, how they place the jelly packet to identify a biscuit or something. It's insanity. <laughs> it's just pure insanity. And another thing that you guys did, and this is, this, this is where my admission comes, I thought Chef Keith was a real, I thought that was a real thing. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So what this is, you know, uh, on the road, we do these like morning news shows. Um, we're doing one in Tampa on Friday. Yes. And um, and w- what we realized very early on was a lot of these shows, they didn't know, they forgot we were coming. They would get the name of the show <laughs> wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Listen, we, we worked in morning yes, radio for, for so long. Yeah, That's why we oh. podcast now. Hey, we had to get out of that. Yeah, but we are do- totally familiar. Yes. We, like, Daniel does this thing called Straight Talk where it's kind of the opposite where we're, like, he's the interviewer, and then we get these obscure interviewees, and but it's, it's similar yeah, to- and then it, we just let the entire show go haywire. Yeah. Like, the microphones fall down and oh. everything explodes. Like, so, yeah, it, we do a thing called Straight Talk. Oh, I love this. Yeah, Straight Talk is very much like- uh, Chef Keith, but I had to admit to Tom that you guys got me, and I said that could never happen. But I watched him. I when I first watched him, I'm like, look at this knucklehead. Like I was all in, man. But, yeah. Well, the, if you try to thread that needle where you don't get kicked off the station, but you do really dumb things, and you're the idiot. So yes. well, we, instead of pitching ourselves with Found Footage Festival, we we just thought. What if we you know, some of these same morning shows we've been on as ourselves that were disasters? What if we pitched fake characters um, that we so thought good. were so ridiculous, like you could ferret out that they were, you know, not real? So we pitched a yo-yo expert first who was promoting environmentalism through yo-yoing on Earth Day. I love you know, it. I love and it. he got booked on a dozen morning news shows. Our buddy Mark played the yo-yo expert, and. Um, and then we decided you know, we let that die down. And then a few years later, we the, we did the fake chef character, Chef Keith. And I went on and said I was this rock and roll chef, and uh, my signature dish was turbo gravy, <laughs> which was all your leftovers uh, from Thanksgiving put into a blender and, and made into a smoothie. Um, and then we tried to see if the anchors would try a little bit on air. You know, they just want to keep the segment smooth. And uh, and then just recently, well, I guess it was like three years ago, we decided to see how far we could push the boundaries of stupidity. And we went on as a strongman duo called Chop and Steel. Chop and Steel. Yeah. And that one you could probably, you know, if you're watching at home, you probably knew that was goofy. And, you know, because Joe and I, you can't see us on a podcast, but not strong, I don't think is the first word that would come to mind. Um, yeah, I mean, very maybe, average. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and... And so, but we showed up, and and all the news stations who booked us, except one, one turned us away, but um, everybody else said yeah, and uh, uh, we got on and did these really unimpressive feats of strength, and uh, and that one we actually got sued for. Uh, Yeah, by Gray, right? uh, You got sued by Gray Television. Oh, they sued you? Yeah. Yeah. I was going to wait for that part, but yeah, so they do this. Yeah, so tell the story. So you're doing this, and obviously some people are buying it. Some people are obviously skeptical, and you pull one over on the owner of this telecommunications company, and they're mad. They get real mad? Yeah, well, we did like three three of these. We got booked on a dozen stations, and we did three of them, and um, one was in our college town, small town, Eau Claire, Wisconsin, and... um, and uh, we did this. We did the show. They had us do promos, like coming up there. You're watching WEAU, and so the station itself was wasn't mad. And I don't think they knew we weren't real strongmen. <laughs> you know, they just thought, <laughs> well, that was the segment didn't go as we planned, but that's how it goes. You know. Um, but then their station, their the owner, Gray Television, who owns you know 100 stations, they're based in Atlanta, I think. Um, they they got embarrassed as a as a you know, I guess a network or a sure. whatever it is. And uh, so in order to teach us a lesson um, about testing the journalistic skills of their anchors, they sued us in federal court. And uh, we were in the middle of, you know, doing more of these and had to put it on hold to find a lawyer. And uh, it, was, it was pretty pretty harrowing. But um, yeah. what did they sue they you? Made... Hold on. I'm curious. So what did they sue you for? What did they say the damages were? It was yeah. That's the whole thing. There weren't damages, maybe to their reputation, but that that was on them. So it was <laughs> right. Um, it was uh, yeah. It was for fraud and conspiracy to commit fraud, 
uh, were the main ones. You're not really so, strong, man. <laughs> you're a fraud. Yeah, yeah, but, but can't yeah. You, isn't it all entertainment? Like, the news is entertainment. It's, yeah. a, it's all the same. Well, 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 yeah, we were like the least ridiculous thing that they booked that week. Too, you know? <laughs> like we, we see the other people in the green rooms at these shows, and like, you know, we're the, probably the most entertaining thing on there. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah, ultimately, uh, Vice News was doing a story about it. They called Gray for comment, and all of a sudden, we got all these voicemails saying, let's settle, let's settle, let's settle. So um, ultimately, after a year of getting badgered and, and sort of harassed and having to you know, pay legal fees, uh, we came out on top. And right on. The, the good news is at the end of it, our lawyer was like, uh, check this box if, you know, for this thing, this thing. Oh, did you want a copy of your depositions? And... <laughs> All of a sudden, we're like, oh, we're in the uh, business of found footage and, you know, highlighting awkward and uncomfortable moments on what? video. Now we can have, uh, you know, 20 hours of us uncomfortable swarming in a uh, stuffy conference room being grilled by lawyers. So, can I get that? Yeah. Can I get my deposition? Can I go back? And, I, was, I did that. I was deposed one time. Can I get that? Did you? Yeah. I, I'll yeah, get it. Yeah, you could. We. We had to pay, I think, five hundred dollars for it, which is the most we've ever spent for, you know, sure. footage before. Yeah. But it was well worth it. We got to make fun of ourselves, and uh, it was like in our last touring show, we called it the worst of depositions, and we <laughs> went through twenty hours of footage and just picked out the most uncomfortable moments. That's fantastic. So, so Nick, I'm curious. You should try to get yours. I'm gonna. I'm gonna, man. <laughs> I, I'm curious. Mine was when Orlando. Well, I can't. I should probably not say that. <laughs> yeah. So, but. Uh, no. The uh, when you have this footage, do you ever put it on the internet, or do you uh, hold it so that yeah. only you people can see it on, at the live show? Well, we we hold the best stuff and the the uh, the longest edits of things for our live show. We we want that to be a special thing, but we do post little samples and snippets on our on our website and uh, social channels. Um, so. Uh, yeah, a little bit of both, but we try to make the live show special, so it's stuff you can't see anywhere else, including our own website and YouTube channel. Yeah, because I love seeing like the VCR theater and stuff that you guys do. like. I, I was going through your, yeah, a, a little bit of your YouTube, and I urge all of our listeners to mm -hmm. do that because there's just tons of great stuff on there. If you want to kill some time, there's incredible stuff on there. And also, don't forget, guys, uh, 28th Tampa, 29th Jacksonville, 30th at the Western Training Company in Sanford. We love that place. Go and snatch those tickets. The chat room was asking if they are sold out. I would definitely go there and, and check. Yeah, you can drink at westend.com. Yeah, drink at westend.com. Um, so, so Nick, uh, is is this basically the business is touring, selling tickets? Is there merch involved? I'm always curious, just because like we do our own podcasting business, and I'm always yeah. curious how other people do it as well. We have the dumbest merch table you're ever going to see in <laughs> yes. show business. Uh, it's so stupid. It's like, so, you know, all the videos we show are so hyper specific and we almost have a merch item for every, uh, specific thing. And so like, I, can I swear on the podcast or not? Yeah, sure. we'll be go back. Ahead, go ahead. Okay. There's a, we found a, a VHS recording of a German adult movie. Um, and, and the actual title, it comes up in bold letters, is Frisbee Fuckers. <laughs> and it's, it's, you know, a, two guys throwing a Frisbee, a girl intercepts it, and then, you know, you could probably guess what happens next. And then a big title comes up, black letters on a yellow background that says that title. And we decided, what if we made Frisbees that had that logo on it? That's brilliant. <laughs> so at the merch table, we sell Frisbee Fuckers Frisbees. <laughs> and we can't keep these things in stock. For some reason, <laughs> everybody wants a vulgar frisbee to toss around in the park. So, I kind of want one too. Um, <laughs> I, I, I gotta say, yeah. as soon as it as soon as it left your lips, I was like ready, reaching for my wallet, man. I'm ready. And <laughs> it's so dumb. Yeah, Nick, I love this. And Daniel said he, he was like, "Hey, Nick and Joe are kind of like they're us. Our guys. They're yeah. our guys. They are guys. They're our guys. They just they uh, they provide a, a really good product, and they f around all the time. But it's and they, really weird. And they make fun of themselves. They make fun of what they do. And it's funny because like back in the day, we when we first started this business, we bought some coolers online, and we got them through some like." Uh, 
Alibaba website oh, or whatever. It was terrible. We and, didn't have any money, but and, we wanted to sell like a lunch cooler. And they showed up, and they were super tiny, like one can fit in them, <laughs> and they're just so crappy. <laughs> and they're you know, and then we sold them as Chinese and uh, shit coolers. So that's a literally like Chinese shit cooler, <laughs> and and they sold out in a day. Oh because my god! We, it's our greatest selling product to this day. And we realized just like really? you, it's uh, like people like the joke. Yeah. And they they want to like, support. They like the joke. And they like the inside joke yeah. of it. Uh, and you can only get that frisbee yeah. at the, you know, at these events. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, you know, I, I, yeah, I would stop. Right, on. exactly. No, yeah, it's all about branding. So you know, I, <laughs> <laughs> like, you get you get crappy coolers, you sell them as crappy coolers. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, great idea. Well, Nick, yeah, thanks. You're getting, you're getting my wheels turning about get, selling coolers at the merch table. Do it. <laughs> Do it. Steal it. Steal it. Yeah, yeah. you got to tie it into yeah. a video, though, so I you're going to find a cooler I mean, video. I fair's fair. I wrote down Frisbee, so fair's fair. You know, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Nick, I'm sure they exist. I'm sure there's an igloo uh, training video somewhere. Right? <laughs> oh, <laughs> not a bad fine. idea. Can you th- throw out yeah. uh, where people can find all the videos, all the social, and everything? Yeah, uh, foundfootagefest.com has links to everything, YouTube, uh, Instagram, TikTok, all the places. And we do a weekly uh, Internet show, uh, you know, because we're only in Florida once every few years. So um, we do a Tuesday night show called VCR Party that it's just all the newest stuff we found that week. Basically, we're just throwing it up and it's really seeing good. what sticks. Yeah, it's it's awesome and it's laid back and they like they just throw in the videos and let you watch. It's killer. So, hey, thank you so much for the yeah. time, man. We appreciate it and uh, and and enjoy enjoy Florida for the first time in two years. Thanks. Yeah, we'll see you in Sanford. Looking uh, forward to it. All right, man. Cool. Be good. See you, Nick. That is Nick from the Found Footage Fest. It's so interesting that we live in a time. Um, and I love this, by the we way. Live in time. <laughs> um, but it's becoming harder and harder because um, there only can be so many things. And there can only be I, one. Yeah. There can be only one. Um, Highlander. But, uh, you know, Nick and Joe, they came up with this idea and then they turned it into a business. I love it. And it's such a weird thing. Like, we find these. I wish I thought of obscure, it. I like this. I wish I was yeah. driving around getting VCR tapes at old ladies' houses. But it's the same business as our business, or it's really same. any Way better. local, uh, you know, uh, media business or like online social influencer businesses. Like, you, you do this thing. And all right, how do you turn it into a business? You get followers, you uh, put out content, and then you sell tickets. So like they're going more the ticket route, or they're doing tours because obviously they've got listeners well, across the country. Well, they're also we didn't really get into this, but they're also like very high in media. Like one of the gentlemen, I believe Joe wrote for the Onion, and I believe oh uh, yeah, 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 and then I believe Nick may have uh, have been a writer for the Daily Show. Like we're we're talking about yeah. people that are like. You know, yeah, not yeah. just two bumpkins from Florida that started a podcast. No, you, they you understand. Know. That. Not to sell us short. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm proud of what we do, but, I mean. Yeah, yeah. They they were. Sometimes uh, I forget both of us went to college and graduated. <laughs> I forget that all the time. How much does that really mean nowadays? For some uh, reason, it does still. Like, when you say it to people, you're like, I know, really? I know. Like, when I tell, like, I don't know if it's a good thing or bad. I'd, I'd be more inclined to think it's a bad thing that when I tell people we were both UCF graduates, like, what? It's a yeah yeah that means we're, uh, they They're think bu- we're fools. They do. I think they do. I think they do. <laughs> well, we are though. <laughs> so yeah. I say, are we? Yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 We are. I mean, we're not. We're not not. Yeah yeah yeah. We're not not fools. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> now, how much of a fool are know, we on the, the spectrum? Day. Depends on the day. I was thinking about this the other I day. I changed my fullness. We had somebody. Uh, I got an argument with him. We had somebody on uh, Reddit say that uh, we're too off the rails now. We're too kooky, cuckoo crazy. Oh, don't There's worry. no straight person. Quit looking at Reddit. They don't know. Uh, no, nothing. no, no, no. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. No, everything's fine. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. just like, you know, I'm just saying. Yeah, they, yeah. They say it's too off the rails. It's too crazy in here. I barely know how to turn on everything. <laughs> it was a hard morning. Um, I've. I've done the deductions, and it seems like everybody wants us to be as funny as possible, and that's what we're doing. Okay. <laughs> right, right, right. Hey, you want us to like I'm, tone I'm it game. down? I'm, Uh, There's no toning here, buddy. Anyway, straight flab. So I was thinking about this the other day, and we've notoriously joked around about being bad at business, right? Yeah. So, and we are almost too much, though. No, I, I Uh, would. Are we? Am I being serious here, or should I make jokes? No. Well, I think we've done it too much because now people think we're like we're dumb. Yeah, but that's fine. Who cares? We're not doing business. You no, know. but then it makes me think I am dumb. Yeah, but, like I start, yeah. I start thinking they're right, and I start second guessing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like I'm in my own head. Well, we're not. 
not, not dumb. dumb. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, in a world full of other bad at business people, if we're bad at business too, but not as bad at business as the others, what does that make us? Not good at business, yeah, no, but just not, better. Better than, than bad. <laughs> well, not really. Well, better than. Uh, worse than good. <laughs> the, uh, the top Shooting end of for bad. Good. Shooting for good. On the spectrum of bad at business, top of we're bad. closer to good <laughs> than bad. Than the real, real bad. Are we bad, it. though? Yep. Okay. <laughs> but, I knew it. I but knew not it. as bad as others. Right. Which makes us better than others. But still not good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think anybody's really good. Um, not in, not in. There are people that make good business decisions. Like, okay, let's look at the I think NFL. My wife is good. The, I think the, Andrea's good. The the NFL is pretty good at business. It's if you just you just look at it like to making money, right? Okay. But it's only because I think they they lucked out in the fact that they are now in a world where nothing's live and everything's on demand. And it's the only product that people are watching live and still watching like network TV for and stuff. So the advertising power has never been bigger. Right um, now. That's true. The problem is, as you know, 10 years from now, because like uh, they just announced that they're doing streaming only games uh, next year, like Peacock is same thing. Hosting. They sort of did this year, yeah, right? but they're ramping yeah. it up. And um, uh, and so a lot of people think that uh, in the future, the Super Bowl will be streaming only and like everything is going to be streaming. And so then it's all right now without that huge pool of advertising money that the networks were giving you right throughout the entire country yeah. of like, you know, all the affiliates that sell the commercials. You know, that's a lot of money. It is. I don't know what they're going to do. Because that's so much money. It's the same thing with the, the terrestrial radios having a problem. It's like so much money of old school heritage money. And you got to somehow you, convert it into the new money. Uh, yeah, it's streaming. The new commercials, right. Yeah, yeah. So then those either the streaming services have to pay you what you would have made or they have to start adding their own commercials. And then the problem is the sales force, all these small markets have a sales force established already. And yeah, like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So it becomes very complicated, yeah, but slowly does. but surely, it seems like everything's just going to go to streaming and on demand and stuff. Oh, and it's already there. But I feel like the NFL will inevitably make less because of it. Because the, the well, infrastructure I mean, that, now. Well, that would make sense because, I mean, even if you just used me as an example, I hit a sweet spot in the radio business where conventional radio style, I will make X amount, and this is the most I will ever make. I'll never make more because I'm working for the Monsters. We're syndicated in six markets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the syndication money. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I had all, all different yeah. revenue streams coming in, so I had, like, a little money from the peak. from Louisiana. I had some from Georgia. I had, you know, I was, you know, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's. I, I, it feels it's like just they're cyclical in the peak. for everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. That makes so, sense. So it's like how and now unless they start going to a direct subscriber. That's service. what I think they will do. But the, I think the NFL because like why not have your own Salesforce, sell it on your own app, and then own everything and just do it yourself. The problem is MLB uh, does that. Yes, but it, and and mm. NFL's a better product with what double triple maybe. The um, quadruple the listenership. Yeah, uh, I've seen Maybe another. More. Um, the, How much more? The WWE. Remember when they re released their own app? Well, that was a disaster. And it was because they realized, like, just let an, an established Peacock. company that yeah. has a sales force, and you know, because it's too hard to build something. Uh, and then just give it to someone else. It's, it's already established. So it'll, you know, be it'll take the, years. To... It'll be the NFL app presented by NBC or CBS or CNN or Amazon or right. And they ju they just let yeah, them yeah, control yeah. it. Uh, although, but what about all that affiliate local advertising money? They need some way to get that. They need the AutoZone in Orlando. Yeah, to put in because all, all six auto you know, zones will pull their money yeah, yeah, and buy yeah. the commercial. No, I know what you you're know what I'm saying. saying. So know, all that local money they got to figure out because now we have the structure of it's all like local markets, and then they get a certain amount of time. Then there's national commercials, right? Mm -hmm. Just like the Super Bowl. So you don't get that in stream. Well, no, no, you do. You can, you can, but you the geofence it, and oh, it's a mess. But the, the the local people, the local salespeople have the relationship with the local auto zone here. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, and and the Amazon or Netflix. 
Netflix. Or Netflix is going to jump in this game. They, I mean, they already are. They're with that um, uh, Jake Paul, Jake Paul and Tyson fight. Yeah. Like, when is do- that again? They're doing more and more live events. It's the summer sometime. I think in May, maybe. Um, they. You uh, want to have a? You want me to have a party? Should I have a party? Should okay. we have a listener party somewhere? Here. Should we buy it and do a do it somewhere? We're just so we can all be a part of it. I'm glad you brought this up because uh, I, do, should we take a break or you want to power? Okay, no, no, let's take a break. And when we come back, I want to talk to you about this because uh, when I heard Mike Tyson talk about it, I have a different feeling. Now. Okay, all right, all right. We'll talk about that when we return. All right. Sorry, I'm going off on a million tangents. Hey, you're fine. My uh, chat room dropped out. I thought this thing was off. That's why I was over here. Oh, okay, Tyson. yeah. I was like, are we still on? But we are. So I don't have any chat room. That is. Friday one. Friday one. Thank you. He was great. Yeah, it was great. That's a. Uh, he I sounds like a had, good guy. I wish guy. we had him in here. I know, so yeah. that sucks because like we'll keep in touch. Yeah, I mean, that we, guy's. I I want to do some skits with those guys. We've got we've got their information. Uh, he sounds cool. I got cool. inspired and I want to like do um, just great thoughts again. Just hit him up. Because I'm sure he'd j- jump on and talk to us about shit every once in a while. You know, like, it's like the <coughs> Ross Tucker, right? Uh, oh, I love Ross Tucker. He, uh, I'll send him an, uh, a text uh, at the middle of the summer, like, hey, you want to jump back on the show? Like, when, And he'll be like, yeah, sure. And then it's a, like, I feel like once a year we'll talk to him, he'll promote his stuff, and, and he's good with that, right? We could do a, have a lot of relationships like that. Let me fix something real fast, buddy. I'm sorry. No, I don't care. We're still on Twitch, all right? Yep. All right. And YouTube. I'll just talk to Twitch. Um, it's funny because with all the drama at the radio station and stuff, um, <clears throat> I see the comments, and then uh, I realize, like, people, um, first, a lot of people still think we work there. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> we work for iHeart. And I realize, like, we don't say it. Uh, you know, all our listeners know, but, like, outside <laughs> – why would they not? Uh, why would they know that if they don't know us or know the show or whatever? Okay, I got it back now. Okay. Um, but uh, that is a misconception that we somehow work for them or whatever. We are one hundred percent independent. People forget that. Here's a funny thing. Sometimes I even forget that. I forget I, I like don't work for anybody sometimes. Yeah, and I'm like, hold it. Yeah, and you'll yeah, tell yeah, me. You'll yeah. be like, turn your car around and go home, motherfucker, <laughs> you little weak piece of shit. Yeah, do, yeah, yeah. Do whatever you want for, the, like, for our company. And I'm like, he's right. I am the boss. But you know what? It's it's kind of bullshit because we do work for someone. We work for our own company, and we work for the listeners. Correct. We do. And so the listeners are our bosses. And you think like, oh, the what well, the, the the advertisers are like, no, nope, the listeners are the bosses. Because the advertisers are only here because the listeners <laughs> and they will cut they will cut us as soon as they stop making money, as soon as the listeners stop using them. So, I mean, we've got a good enough relationship with it. They'd probably talk to us first like, "Hey, how's everything?" Going? What do you want to do here, buddy? Oh, you're going to tell me about Tyson, it. Yeah. yeah, Tyson. Okay. Um, why don't you bring us back? And yep. yeah, they said in that case, get to work. Okay, sorry guys. All right, you're <laughs> right. working. You're right. Here we go. In 3. They're right. 2. Welcome back to a corporate time. So, the Mike Tyson Jake Paul fight. I've kind of uh hidden it in my feed. Yeah. Because, you know, you get all that stuff. I was getting oh. too much Jake and Tyson, like, training videos. Yeah, right. And then I, <laughs> yeah, I got yeah. to the point where I saw the one where people are calling out Tyson for splashing water all over him. And then I just started hiding things because I was like, yeah. ah, I don't want you guys to ruin it before we get to it. And that's what's going to happen. It's all these comparisons. Like, here, Jake Paul at 18. And here's yeah. Mike Tyson at, at 18. Look at I'll be like, well, who cares? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. That's that not that what we're talking it? about. But so, uh, anyway, I was exci- curious about this fight, right? And everybody has speculation whether it's rigged or it's just a put on or whether it's going to be real or not. And it's impossible to know, right? right. Because you don't know. We're behind... not in the camps. We don't. Yeah, you know, we don't know what they comes to light. But what, I don't think. It yeah, what they've talked about, what their deal was, and uh, but I do 
I would bet heavily on the fact that there was a conversation about what was going to happen at the fight. And it's not just 100% real. None of them talked about what they were going to do or whatever. Like, I've... I'm pretty confident that they have an idea of how they want it to go okay. or what's best for entertainment okay. and what's best for themselves. What made you think that? Just because of the situation. They signed, you know, Netflix is paying a bunch of money. This is going to be the most watched thing. Like, they don't want it to be Tyson. Now, I don't know. There could be an element of, like, Tyson knocking Jake Paul out in two seconds. It would be insane. Like, the clip I mean, of that huge, huge, but and that's makes, the biggest outcome, right? That could, but happen. Netflix won't necessarily want that. They want time streaming. Right. And so they, you know, I don't know how the, something could be like that. I don't know. Yeah. But here's the problem is I was excited to see like, Oh, what could this be? And then I saw Mike Tyson talk about it. And Mike Tyson, I believe has two switches, right? Uh, he's like, if he switches to fighter mode, that's the mode he never wanted to be back in because he like he talked about it like it, it turned him into a crazy person like he got yeah. you know he grew up in this weird thing where he was trained at 12 years old yeah. and like it's almost you know, like an assassin in yeah, some weird and, way right and, like, and, and he didn't like when he got into fight mode because he had to get into this kill killer I want to kill yeah, yeah, yeah and then yeah, I've heard those clips and um so and th- when he talks about this fight he tries to emulate some of it but it's he. You could tell it's the, he's he's not a, has no killer instinct. This is he's not. I don't. So he's not that guy anymore. And I don't believe he's taking this fight seriously. seriously. As if he tries to hype it up because I'm sure you know there's contracts and lawyers like, right. hey, you gotta do. So it kind of deflated your balloon a little bit. I was just like, oh, this yeah, he doesn't, yeah. you know, he, and he can't really act that well. Like, well, you know, I mean, <laughs> he I can't. Mean, like Jake Paul can do it. Like he can, he's used to it, but yeah, Mike I mean, Tyson's like, old I guess man. Once now, you've lied on YouTube for you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. years, or just in uh, character, yeah, in character, yeah, yeah, played the character, yeah. And so Mike Tyson does, is Mike Tyson, yeah. And uh, I don't believe that. I don't he's know. He's pretty this, good in Hangover. Pretty good. Because he's playing himself, and he's limited. They I'm limited. <laughs> <with him. laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, he yeah. played Mike Tyson, but he can't pretend. Like, he really wants to, like, you know, take this fight seriously. And, and when he's when he tries to, yeah. I see right through it. This that is makes what sense. I was worried I'm about. Like, like, for this, though, right. honestly, if they wanted to do this and they wanted my opinion on it, with the way that the news cycle changes so quickly and with how social media is so fast and how, like, there were things that happened three days ago that we were like, holy crap. Like, there are people already forgetting about the bridge collapse, right? Like, it's just the news cycle yeah. is faster than it's ever been. I think that they should have set up the fight and then pulled the trigger, like, in the next two weeks. Because I feel like when you let it give, like, yes, they are going to make a ton of money and everything, but then just we're all batting it around. And Like, for me. you got to hide Mike Tyson away. He can't yeah, act. You got to. you got to keep him away, yeah. and then you got to strike fast. It's got to be like, oh, the, fact, the fight that we always wanted is ready to go, and bam, we're going at it. And, but the ultimate problem is, and it's funny because uh, I was yelling at Tracy on the BDM Why Facebook page. Why are you yelling at Tracy? <laughs> because yelling at her. She does a lot of nice stuff she, for us. She put up some video of, it was one of these influencers making fun of a college university that's fake. It's not real, but it's like a Christian University of Michigan. And then the acronym is like, Blank oh, University, okay. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. and then uh, and then she's laughing at it, and she's like, "Oh, look at this sh- T-shirt! Look at this!" Hood. Like, and she's laughing at how ridiculous that they didn't realize right. that they spelled that word university, right. but it's not real. Like, right, right, like, but, it, right. But does it matter? Is the the new argument right? And she's like, "It doesn't matter," but I'm like, "No, no, it has to be because it's not funny." Unless it's real, and with the Jake Paul and Mike Tyson fight, right. it's not good. Unless it's 100% real, then what are we watching? Right, right, right. And we can't ever know, and we'll never know. I don't know, man. I debate you on the C word university. I like that. <laughs> but, That's pretty funny. But it, but it's, it's not funny unless it's actually no, like, I know. exactly. It, this like, is, this unless they didn't fighting. realize, I know. This is what we're fighting right now is that, yeah. like, you have on one side, you have the people that are saying, like, we need. Uh, some assemblance of reality here, and then the other side, you have the people that are like, "I watched it; it's fine." Like, I guess if you, I know, I'll watch it. Yeah, it but just, you're not going to give it any weight. 
It's, it has no value. It would be so much more valuable if it was real and we could prove that it's real because then I'd go back to being this is the most exciting event because I can't wait to see what happens. Well, it has more value because it's a real mistake if they like if they actually name their university yeah, the yeah. C word. And and then, or the acronym in them, they spell it out, yeah, and that's yeah. what it is. Christian University of Michigan, yeah, yeah. and they spelled it, and they didn't realize they printed a bunch yeah. of shirts, and they're selling it, and then the, they're like, oh, no. That's funny. Yeah. That is funny. Wait, hold on a second. Why'd you do a Chinese voice there? <laughs> no, no, no. no hold on. You did. I, you went, oh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. I heard that. That was an old man. Uh, computer uh, enhanced. <laughs> oh, no. Like, you really, yeah. But the Chinese old man? Is that what you're doing? But the it could never be real. I knew it was fake right at the beginning because someone would have said, oh, "We can't put that." Like, wh how yeah, oblivious? That doesn't happen. Very often. Of course, it, right? You right. know, but sometimes the funny things like that happen. But they're jewels. They're like they're like, precious. Like they're, they're not man-made diamonds, is what you're saying. Remember the bass fishing old man that used to fall off his boat a lot uh, and then curse. Was it Bill Dance? Was it Bill Bay? Yeah. It may have been. But those falls, like, I don't I mean, he may have gotten into doing it on purpose later on when everybody's like, oh, well, they how like do you that. tell the difference? But the beginning ones were real. Yeah, like, he yeah. actually fell off his boat. He'd, he'd be cursing. He'd, like, he'd, problems would happen. Right. And you know that's why it's that funny. about your bumbling, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. People have said that before where they're oh, like, I'm I acting. think he's doing it on purpose now or he's leaning into it. Is that kind of what you're referencing? Well, um, I'm not that good. <laughs> you think I'm a really You're good actor? Tyson. You're very much like Tyson. If I was that good of an actor, you think I'd be doing this? <laughs> like, yeah, Bill I mean, Dance. Bill Dance. Fish yeah. and Funnies. Yeah, Did yeah. I say Bob Dance? I think Bob Dance had a uh, car dealership here in town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Bob Dance, the car dealership here in town, what was wonderful about his ads, he had a little dog. He had a pee, -pee dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he'd always be, come out and see Buster the Wonder Dog. And they'd have the hijinks commercials. My dad and I loved them. My dad's favorite one was... I think Bob dances up in a cherry picker with uh, Buster the Wonder Dog, and Buster the Wonder Dog accidentally threw uh, Bob Dance out of the cherry picker, and they threw a dummy out. Oh, my dad. I've never <laughs> seen my dad laugh at My dad thought that pee-pee dog had thrown that old man to his death, and my dad was cry laughing. He thought it was the funniest thing. My yeah. dad loved pee-pee dogs and car salesman death. Yeah, There's two things my dad loved. There was a time where the old... Uh, you go to do something and then you throw a dummy. I st I'm still there. <laughs> I'm super mature, Dave. <laughs> mature, maturity wise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At 47. Yeah. If you throw a dummy that's supposed to be dressed like you into the street and everybody stops, <laughs> and every I'll laugh and laugh. That's why when your son got a dummy, I was like, yes, it continues. <laughs> Finally, a real good human. Finally, somebody that knows top tier comedy. It's, it's uh, me and your son. I'm going to start teaching your son how to toss a dummy around and really be funny with it. So Super Dave Osborne. Yes. Did anybody believe no. during that time that that was because it was obviously uh, the dummy and that was the, That's the gag. The gag, right. But there had to just like wrestling. It was the subtle lead up. It was his mannerisms. It's all the jokes that he said. Yeah, there were no stunts ever. But there had to have been people that believed it. Real dumb people. My, my that, dad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that yeah, believed yeah. he was really. Yeah, doing... I don't think my dad's dumb at all. <laughs> no, no, no. But no. he's also like we are special people, the Dennis's, in that we will go dumb for entertainment. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I so like I'm that. serious. I do it for I magic like all the time. It's a I better tell, life. That's what I tell to Kosha Kimla. When he comes in here, the difference yeah. between you and me, Dr. Dre, is that I just say, I don't want to figure it out. I just sit there and like, <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, dumb. Yeah. Just yeah, do some yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff. And then you're, yeah, yeah, better way to live. It yeah, is. Yeah. It's you, hard sometimes, yeah, though. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, but you, you, if you hard. just like it, if you're like, oh, he's doing it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah and just enjoy it. it. I'm like, well, that's obviously, like, my way of living is horrible. <laughs> like, I'm just yelling, this is fake. Yeah. How could this be funny if it's not <laughs> How real? How this be? <laughs> <laughs> like, it can't be, like, a fake fake blooper it shouldn't be funny like, like and my memory's working again because your son's dummy's name is jeff jefferson yeah yeah yeah. where is jeff how's he doing he's sitting in my son's desk scaring me every time <laughs> i walk into the room every See, day every day i get micro tier, scared that's top tier comedy like five times a day i get micro scared and i'm like this has got to be over <laughs> years of this this will take life away from me right like my heart being jumped like a that's little bit that's my anxiety yeah yeah, yeah. i've been like, telling you this for like, a minute i'll die early because of jeff jefferson or maybe yeah. it'll make you tougher right i kind of feel like the micro scaring is, it's why my heart yeah, yeah, rate yeah. is so low. My heart rate is low because I live with such a high level of anxiety that yeah. when I finally do calm down, my heart goes down to like 48, 45. <laughs> yeah, you're living. I'm not kidding when I say at 5, that. 5,000 RPM. I, when I go to sleep, my sleep number bed will send me a text message of like, are you alive? 
<laughs> like, because it gets down to like I think uh, two nights ago I hit 45 is my resting heart rate. So does that make you more healthy? Because I don't think so. I it, think I'm I'm, dude, think I'm coming in for a landing. But you have a runner's heart rate, like in, in yeah. But you look at my body. In the <laughs> I have a roller's body. Yeah, but it doesn't matter where your body, <laughs> your heart is the only thing that matters. <laughs> I th- I've talked to uh, these endurance athletes and, and stuff like uh, they their cardio is so good yeah. that their heart rate you know their resting baseline? heart rate is insane. What's your ba- does your you've been wearing your watch? What's your baseline heart I don't know. rate? How did, where does it say that? Um, you could take your heart rate right now. What's your heart rate right now? Go to your... Um, okay, I don't know how to use any of this. My resting heart rate is... Uh, my resting heart rate average is 55. I don't even know how to go to the different things in here. Yeah, my resting heart rate average over the time that I sleep for the last month is 55. That's low. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. got to be bad. Yeah. No, they, they, I'm telling you, that's what I'm saying. And my variable. Athletes and, and people that do a lot of cardio have low resting heart rate rates. Now, I don't know. And my HRV, which I don't know what they call that, your heart rate variability, is uh, 128. Which they say when you have a, a high heart rate variability, it's a good thing. But I don't know what the, any of that means. That's another thing, too. Like, uh, Crystal has these uh, arrhythmias all the time where her heart starts doing some weird thing, like, like a weird. You know what that is? You know what I call that? That's nature's drum solo. It's just a side fill. <laughs> and then she's like, my heart's doing something weird. And I'm like, well, that's like. <laughs> and Do you grab the phone? No, because yeah. if it just stops, like, by the time the uh, paramedics get there, it should never be the same. Um, so I'm just going to let her go. Uh, I'm joking. When your wife comes to you with a concern, like when my wife comes to me with a concern, I instantly go, I start making plans. I'm like, it's fine. I start making plans on who I'm going to date. She, when she went to the doctor, because it, uh, the Apple watch will like, uh, will say like, you're having some, some episode or whatever. And then she showed the doctor, the Apple watch. Stand up, you fat ass. And the doctor like, that don't mean nothing. (laughs) 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 <laughs> I like he said that. that don't mean nothing. I like that. I like. Yeah. It. I like. You go to your doctor with a concern. Doctors are real mad at the internet. Uh, yeah, they, they all like yeah, the yeah, they hate the internet. They hate technology telling you you're sick because you go tell them and you're like, I tell you you're sick. I'm not your watch. We got just enough time for me to tell you a story about how it's an origin story of how I became the way that I am with a certain way of grooming. Okay. For years, you've been telling me that you shave your downstairs, you bick it, you bick it clean, oh, like damn. a like a Mister Clean's head. <laughs> and it's the not, reason not. that I am anti that is because one time I'd done just the same thing. Oh. I'd done exactly. I was just like you, man, just like you. You got the, the red same, dots. Did the same thing. I put the old baby oil on there and got it uh, down to the, huh, you know, just do down that. to the baby skin. <laughs> and uh, yes, I had the red dot pappus. And I'd gone in there to get my physical for the year, and my female uh, black doctor at the time, who was drop dead gorgeous, as she's like uh, looking at my naked body and giving me my physical and my full test, you know, the cough and the whole nine. She uh, she said, uh, "Grow some hair on that. Come on." <laughs> no, no. Oh, she shamed she you. She shamed me. That's weird. She dude. shamed she me. Even mentioned- and I have never. Like, honestly, like, even telling you this story right now, I'm frozen in my tracks with fear. It was one of the scariest. I can only imagine how you would have reacted had your doctor told you to grow some pubes. can only imagine that you would turn bright red, you'd freeze. I like it. When and that's the reason why I'm not into it, man, is because the doctor told me, and then for some reason I started thinking that maybe when you do that, it's uh, bad for your health. And it's just not true. When your boxers create a red indentation around your waist because you're too fat <laughs> i like that <laughs> where you got some red dot pappas and then oh, yeah. uh the indentation of your box i don't get the red in the front i get the red in the back <laughs> like i get yeah, a red yeah, yeah. baboon i get a baboon let's try uh just a couple of voicemails to get us out of here let's try this one we got a voicemail about cadillac pat is this cadillac pat what's up gentlemen and no longer sam um <clears throat> Uh, I'm listening to the show with Cadillac Pat, the corporate time from the last week. Anyway, just in general, I feel like I always want to give you my stupid advice. Uh, Cadillac Pat is such a good guest. and <laughs> No one has ever said that. <laughs> no one has. Thank you for your, I appreciate you saying that. 
I'm just laughing my ass off during this whole show trying to figure out why it's so funny and unique. And I, I think he, I mean, I probably just maybe connect with his sense of humor, but it seems to be that you guys are very intentionally just trying to make him laugh. And he's in the room and he's like giving it back to you guys. I'm not trying to make anybody laugh on the show. <laughs> where'd you get the silly yeah, idea we're like dead that? Serious. Yeah, where'd you get a dumb idea like so that? So I think you're getting a little bit of that like stand up comedian immediate feedback and then you guys up your game a little bit and just get them laughing more and sam although i love her she's probably not like your normal demographic that's why she was great she was like the outlier opinion and she would give tom a hard time but probably the majority of your audience is more like pat and finds so most of our audience is Cadillac. Pat. <laughs> is that true uh oh <laughs> so much stuff funny and so when you guys get going just trying to make him laugh in the room it's very apparent. So, so most well, of our um, audience um, is destitute, <laughs> surrounded by a collection of 90s toys. Oh, my God. This is not good. Does he think Cadillac Pat is a stand-up comedian? Because he's just a bartender <laughs> who dresses oh, like in the 90s. Don't say no, it like no, that. No, no. I'm saying I call him the 90s superhero. <laughs> and you're, you're, like, dismissive. You're like, no. just a bartender. No, no, no. You are uh, accidental dickhead. No, 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 like, not, seriously. He don't, no, Pat knows. Just a bartender. He's a friend. Just, well, you could have said a friend. You could have said he's just our friend. Yeah, okay. Which is certainly nicer than just a bartender. Almost sounds like oh, dismissive. Okay. Like, just a yard guy. <laughs> he's not known. Yeah, yeah. Pat knows me. He knows I'm not uh, right. being mean. I don't know, man. No, no, I, I don't know. I would wouldn't have said it yeah, like but, that. But he just, uh, he's our friend. That's like saying Sam was just a producer. Come on, man. <laughs> he's Have our, a little respect. He's our friend that happens to be a bartender that he just comes on the show once a month. Now, and we just, he does happen. We have no plan of what yeah. we're going to talk and about. He bury, he's coming in today. <laughs> and all he does is collect 90s memorabilia. Oh. And he buries tiny worthless treasures <laughs> <laughs> all around his home. Yeah, yeah. And his workplace. Yeah, yeah. And then we just talk S with him yeah, for Yeah, we just talk to him. Hey, what's 20, going 30, on? 40 minutes. Yeah, then he'll be like, hey, I bought this Homer Simpson watch from Burger King. And we're like, oh, wow, that's <laughs> crazy. Did you hide any crazy man treasures? It is weird what we have fleshed the show out to be. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's a culmination of a bunch of bizarre it's segments bizarre. Yeah, it's, it's and crazy. things that don't really mean anything, but then also... I they mean the most. <laughs> they mean nothing and the most at the same time. And nothing can be done. <laughs> You're and not. everybody believes everything we say, too. Because, like, there's, there's sometimes the things... They do? Le- oh, yeah. Oh, you, you have no idea. They absolutely do. <laughs> what do they believe? I can't even <laughs> tell you. Here's something they believe. This one's weird. Yo, it's DeBerry Joe. Um, since we're on conspiracy theories... Um, I've been on one lately, and um, I think maybe some people might be able to back me up, but um, I think M&Ms are the perfect um, incubators for alien eggs. Um, Think about it. There's got to be some kind of life out there that is going to thrive on chocolate. I know I am. Um, That hard shell is the perfect incubator. Um, Let me know what you think. Um, How high do you have to be to think (laughs) that aliens would incubate inside the hard shell of an M&M? Milk chocolate candy. But for what reason? I don't know. <laughs> well, why M&M? There's lots of hard shell candies. Uh, I, 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 uh, yeah, I don't. Uh, I, yeah. You gotta tell I don't it. think that aliens are among us. I don't think they're walking around. Yeah, but with a conspiracy theory, there needs to be some theory that makes you think, like, oh, that's interesting. That I could see that happening. Or, oh, that's odd that this is this way. Maybe there's some other reason behind right, it. Right. That you just can't say, like, I think that aliens live inside M and M's. That's it. <laughs> like, yeah, wh- why? Yeah. Well, anybody can think up something absurd, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. You're just telling my me your feet, dream. My feet are bologna <laughs> sandwiches. Okay, that's absurd. Yeah, yeah. You right. got to link it to some logic to make it interesting, right? Well, he was like, missing that part. <laughs> like, but you told me all of our listeners are like cat, <laughs> so, and they're just bartenders. <laughs> so I was like, okay, that checks out. <laughs> Sounds like another just a bartender coming in, calling in to give us the facts. I'm sorry, sir. And uh, I'm sorry, Pat. Uh, it, we'll you know, be in today. You get to yeah. apologize to his face. The good thing is Pat doesn't listen to the show. No, no he doesn't. <laughs> None of the characters from our show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if the listeners know that. None of the characters that were uh, that ever appear on the show ever listen to the show. Yeah, yeah, Including yeah. Tom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm the one. <laughs> only uh, Daniel. Only me. Is the only person on the show. Only me. Sam li- never listens. Oh, you no. Don't listen. yeah, yeah. I listen. Yeah, yeah. It is, <laughs> it is bad. It's bad. <laughs> <laughs> but that's fine. That's fine. All right. But I hold up my end of the bargain. All right. Bye-bye.
That's Friday two. Friday two. So that's one and two. Then and we'll do, Pat yeah, one thirty. Mm-hmm. But we'll come back at one and then do a segment before Pat. And then and it'll give Pat. me a chance to cut this, and then we can do the intro. Uh, cool. All right, guys. <clears throat> well, I guess have a good lunch, and we'll be back 